Hey guys, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. And we have got another Marvel Legends mystery box today, but this is not your typical mystery box because these are the Marvel 12-inch Icons figures, and they're so big that it actually takes three boxes to hold my entire collection. So we're going to go through each one of these boxes, look at the figures, go through the history of them, and see exactly what we can find. And right here on top, I actually laid out three examples of the Marvel Legends line, starting with one of the original figures in the line, the Spider-Man figure from 2006. Now, for a little bit of toy history... Toy Biz had the license for Marvel toys from the beginning of the Marvel Legends line in 2002 all the way up to 2006. And they did some incredible things, advancing sculpt and articulation. And right before they had to give up the license to toy giant Hasbro, they put out these 12-inch figures. And this is obviously the Spider-Man from that one. They did variants on many of these. This was the maskless version of Peter Parker. Eventually in one of these boxes, we'll see the masked version. But what these figures were, they were basically double sized of their regular action figures. For comparison, here is a six inch Spider-Man. So you can see just how much bigger a 12 inch figure. It's obviously double, but I mean, it really looks that much bigger than the original figure. And what they did were they took sculpts that they already had, and this is the classic McFarlane Spidey sculpt from Toy Biz. You can see it has these very unique shoulder butterfly joints, kind of one of their early attempts at butterfly joints. It has a lot of articulation, including double elbows, double knees, and each individual finger is articulated on this figure. It uh, He can get into those terrific thwip sort of poses when he's shooting his webs, works on both sides, just a lot, a lot of articulation, has a good bend here. But what makes this one so special is, of course, the Peter Parker head sculpt. And, I, you know, it's a very classic Peter Parker hairdo. I think it's a little bit of a thin face, but it certainly works with this thin body. And this was one of the thinnest Spider-Man figures that we got in a long time. But when you bring out this 12-inch scale, you can see all of the detail, all of the muscles, all of the folds in the costume. Look at these back muscles and the detail, the way the suit kind of ripples around that spider on the back. It's just really, this, this scale allows you to see so much more. So this was from Toy Biz's final run on Marvel Legends in 2006. And then Hasbro took the line over, and they began producing Marvel Legends icons as well. They changed the packaging a little bit, and this is the Punisher. They did figures in 2007 and 2009. Now, one thing you can see is there's a little bit less facial wash on the Punisher here. It's like he has the lines painted in on his brow, but he doesn't have that same kind of, you know, just sort of the texture that the Toy Biz figures have. I would imagine this may have originally been sculpted by Toy Biz. It has kind of those classic ball-jointed hips that Toy Biz was known for. One of the things that I find so interesting about this Punisher figure is he was not a six-inch figure. This was not something that we got as a six-inch figure. This is very, very clearly modeled off of Tim Bradstreet's artwork. So Tim Bradstreet did... Punisher did a lot of Punisher covers. He had a very, very photorealistic style, very distinctive looking skull pattern on the Punisher. And this figure clearly represents that. So this is kind of the second evolution in Marvel, Marvel Legends icons. Then finally, we have the third volume of this. And of course, we're back with Spider-Man. Again, this is the pizza Spider-Man body only scaled up to 12 inches. Now it's interesting, there's still a lot of detail in this sculpt. You know, there's still some folds in the clothes. You can see how there at the legs and at the thighs, how it, it ripples around. We've got a really, really nice spidey head sculpt, but it doesn't compare to the level of sculpting detail 
that they did in 2006. So this figure should have been from around 2016 or so. So it's a 10 year newer figure than this one, but just a real change in the way that they sculpted it. Now, while it doesn't, didn't have as much sculpting, what it did come with were accessories, including a really, really solid Peter Parker head that is the right proportions for this figure. He came with that classic Pizza Spidey half-masked face. I love this. It just takes me back to the 1980s and artists like Ron Friends and John Romita Jr. drawing and Steve Ditko, of course, drawing that mask halfway up. And he also came with interchangeable hands. So you ended up with six total hands, two web shooting hands, two open hands, and two fists. So for the money, and these were kind of expensive, which is why I don't have all of the different ones of these, you got a lot out of this figure. So again, 2016 for this. And just one more comparison. Here he is next to a six inch figure, just to give you an idea of the size of the scale. But let's, so now that you see kind of the history of the line and how it evolved, let's just pull out one of these boxes and see what we can find inside. Oh, <laughs> you knew we were gonna start with this unbelievable Venom figure. Now this is the variant. The regular Venom had the full face mask, whereas this is the half eddy, half transformation mask. And look at the intricacies of the sculpt, the way the symbiote is like climbing around. There's even the hint of the eye beginning right there on his forehead. He has this just vicious tongue and the jaw is already forming all the way out with those teeth jutting out. Again, so much sculpting on the body of this figure. You can see it is a massive, massive figure. I mean, the back across the shoulders compared to the Spidey that came out at the exact same time, you can just see the difference. This, this figure has a heft to him that makes him ominous. I mean, it just really is a beautiful, beautiful Venom figure. He does have the articulated fingers that Toy Biz was known for, but it doesn't detract from the... Oh, I'm missing some fingers there. It doesn't detract from the sculpt at all. He's also got nice articulation through his lower extremities, including a really good pivot at the toe, which allows you to get him into some really great crouching poses. You can see that you can bend that right at the mid-waist joint and really have that, that devastating head sculpt coming right at you. Ooh. Next up... We've got the good doctor, Dr. Doom. So Doom was part of Hasbro's first run at the line. So this was not a Toy Biz figure. This was a Hasbro one. So this would have come out either in 2007 or 2009. Those were the, the two times that that line continued. He's an interesting mix because he has these soft goods with the soft goods cape and hood, which actually is really nice. Uh, it would have been nice to have a wire down at the bottom so that you could pose it a little bit easier. But then the his tunic is actually plastic. This is a hard plastic, and then this is more of a, a moldable soft plastic. So that allows you to kind of get his legs and move them into, into some, some better poses. He does have his rocket packs on the back, always a key feature for a classic Dr. Doom, something I look for. And maybe one of the greatest things is when you really focus in on his facial sculpt, you can see they sculpted the scarred face of Doom behind the mask. It's a little difficult to see, but the eyes are in there and they're scarring around them. So really, when you have a figure in this scale, you can go all out on the details of the sculpt. Uh, his hands only have the two joints where they just go from open to a closed fist, and that's pretty typical for a Hasbro figure of this era, but Really, first-class Dr. Doom. Okay, now we have two more of the original line from Toy Biz. So here is one of the greatest Iron Man figures you're ever going to see. This figure, again, is a two-up. And a two-up, when we're talking about action figures and sculpting, is when the sculptors who originally make the figures, they typically sculpt them first in double scale of what they eventually are. So if you're making a six inch figure, the original sculpt is in 12 inch scale. We used to see more examples of this at Toy Fair back when 
most of the toys for the year were revealed at New York Toy Fair in February. We don't see them much anymore, but this gives you an idea of what the sculptors were actually looking at when they designed the figure, knowing that it was going to be shrunk down to uh, about half of the size. But this figure, actually, the original one appeared in Marvel Legends Wave 8 from 2004. It was at the time labeled as modern Iron Man armor. Uh, it came out in 2002, so it's now almost 20 years old. We've seen a lot of different Iron Man armors in the meantime. Uh, I think this one's also called the Tin Man armor. But again, just the size of this allows for such incredible intricate intricacy of the sculpting and this particular Iron Man suit with all of the silver all of the wiring he has a very very complicated mask uh, it almost has like a, a toothy look to it um, and then of course the torso has much more uh, angular sculpting than many of the more classic Iron Man armors this was a great choice to do in this double-sized uh, style uh, again Toy Biz figure all the fingers are articulated. And even look at this. There's even paint apps on the knuckles. There's, there are little wires that make it look like that, you know, that he has, you know, wires at his knuckles and those are painted. That's the kind of, God, that's the kind of thing I love about Toy Biz, just taking it absolutely to the, to the highest degree. His partner in that line, in that original line, none other than Captain America. And this is truly one of the finest Captain America figures that you're going to see. I did a top 10 Captain America figures video uh, back in the summer. And this one is the two-up version of the face-off Captain America. And one of the things that I love about this, one, his colors are really great. I just loved the blue that they used on this figure. I thought that he was bulky and heroic, but without being like too big. But look at what they did with the chainmail sculpting. And they did this on the six inch figure as well, but you're just able to see it so much better on this one. And then with that metallic wash, it really does give the look that he's wearing armor plating. I mean, look at every single scale sculpted and detailed and then brought out with the wash. He does have more of the modern look with the kind of utility belt, but I think he has a very, very classic comic head sculpt. Stern, but not angry. That is a pretty perfect Captain America. And of course, if you have Captain America, he has to come with his shield. And this shield is nice because it has the clip that will allow it to go on his wrist, but it also has the rubber, which can allow you to put it kind of across his back and across his shoulders. I think that's actually a really good look for Captain America. And I would argue that until the Marvel Legends 20th anniversary Captain America figure comes out next year. This may be the best representation of Cap that we've gotten. Now, one of the things that always drives me crazy is when we get part of a team. And unfortunately, that's exactly what Hasbro did with the Fantastic Four. Here we have Johnny Torch, and I think he, Johnny Torch, Johnny Storm, and I think he is a, a two up from one of the Fantastic Four wave figures. Still really nice, something that they did was look at how great that wash is on his hair where they bring in the golds, the orange, and the reds to really give it that flame effect. He has these nice translucent flame pieces that go over the top of him and a really good torch body, you know, a very similar frame to Spider-Man, which is how I see them. I see them as being very similar in size. Torch is not like this big, huge Captain America looking guy. He's much thinner, more like Daredevil or Pete. And that's the type of body that they used here. Also really sweet shine and metallic paint on his, on his FF symbol. Now this one did come with a variant and I have it. And it's the, you know, the Fantastic Four uniform, Johnny Storm. John, or Johnny Torch, as I obviously like to call him. He's got the part flame on hair. You can see the flame effects maybe a little bit better on this one, the way that they're coming off of his forearms and going up around his shoulders. He also has them down here at his feet. This is a terrific figure. And unfortunately, we got Storm, we got Doom, and that was it. No Thing, no Mr. Fantastic, no Invisible Woman. And for a a family like the Fantastic Four, it just drives me nuts when we get 
part of a team, but not the rest. So I don't know that I have ever had this figure on display anywhere in my collection, mainly because he has no one to display with. I mean, I guess I could theoretically put him with Dr. Doom, but that's not what you're going for in a Fantastic Four display. Now, thankfully, they did give us the third of the big three of the Avengers, because here is Thor. And I'm trying to remember if Thor was... Looks like 2006, so he would be one of the first Toy Biz figures. Now, this one, again, look at that incredible Norse god head sculpt. He's got the carved, chiseled cheeks with that incredible jawline. Really, really nice helmet. Good sculpting of his hair with a nice paint wash there. And, again, really terrific soft goods cape. Probably would have been better if it had a wire down at the bottom so that you could kind of fold it around him. But he does have a pretty sweet Molnir hammer that he comes with. Now, honestly, at this size, at 12 inches, you could have put the inscription on Molnir. This Molnir is just, you know, plain. It's a good comic Molnir, but it, it's just, you know, kind of a, a plain hammer. This is one that there's enough room that you could have carved in the, the phrase on there that says, he whoever lifts this hammer shall possess the power of Thor. That would have been a nice added touch, but really like the Jack Kirby, Walt Simonson, you know, kind of stripes to his legs. It's really, really good. And when you combine Thor with Cap and Iron Man, you do have the beginnings of a pretty epic Avengers display in this scale. Now, this Daredevil is actually from, I think, the second half of Hasbro's line. So they, they released some figures in 2007, so immediately after they got the license. I think most of those were probably sculpted by Toy Biz. And they kind of dropped the 12-inch scale for a little while and then came back to it again in 2009. And I believe Daredevil was part of that 2009 wave. He, much like Johnny, has the proper form and shape for Daredevil. It's a really, really good Daredevil head sculpt. And they did a nice job with giving a little bit of alternate paint to his eyes so that they really show up. He also has a nicely carved face. And look at this. I, I noticed this now that I'm looking at it up close. It's not symmetrical. Look at how his chin is carved in on that side, but then not on this side. So he actually has kind of a unique expression on his face that you're able to see when the figure is 12 inches in scale. So really, really nice. Again, he's got lots of detail, lots of the folding of his costume. It just makes it look so much more realistic. These these are really outstanding figures. It's just, it's hard to find a place to display all of them, but great, great Daredevil. I think we're going to see another Daredevil eventually in this. Let's pull in box number two, see who we have in here. Oh, I mean, I don't know why we thought that we wouldn't. Of course, there's going to be Wolverine. You cannot have a Marvel toy line without Wolverine. And lucky for me, they chose one of my favorite looks for Wolverine, and they used one of my favorite sculpts to make this. This is the Astonishing Wolverine figure from Joss Whedon and John Cassidy's run. And one of the things I love about this is he's a really squat Wolverine. So let's see if we can pull out Daredevil. And Daredevil's taller. You can see that Daredevil is taller than Wolverine. Here's the Human Torch, who's on a very similar frame, taller than Wolverine. Wolverine's supposed to be short, and this figure is short like that. Lots and lots of detailing, lots of detailing at this mask, and a lot of bit maybe maybe a little bit too much paint wash here. He's a little dirty looking, but hey, come on! I mean, it's Wolvie. All this musculature that's so nicely carved in. He has very unique boots that are specific to this, this art style. Claws are maybe a little bit long for this one, but hey, we'll take it. Great Wolverine figure. And then one of the more recent ones. So uh, Nightcrawler here, I believe, came out in like 2009 and Hasbro's kind of second go-round with this. This is not a figure that we saw in six-inch scale. So, you know... We saw this Wolverine as a six-inch figure, and this is just a, an enlarged version of it. I don't believe we saw this Nightcrawler ever 
as a six inch figure. So that makes it a fairly unique sculpt. I mean, obviously these Nightcrawler hands and feet are unique. This torso piece here is unique. And he has that great Kurt Warner. Oh, look how cool his hair is with it kind of flowing out in those pointy ears. What a, what a really good figure. Plus he does have a bendable tail and it does have the wire in there. So you can actually make this tail kind of be articulated and work with the figure. And, and uh, I think that's always a big plus with a Nightcrawler. Each finger is articulated, which again helps with an acrobatic figure like Kurt getting him into cool poses. More X-Men, Cyclops. Now this does look like a two-up of the Astonishing X-Men Cyclops. It's in that same costume that you saw with Wolverine. Fairly bland costume, but... You know, I mean, Cyclops, he's a fairly bland character, so I guess that's fairly fitting. Now, what comes next is definitely a new sculpt. I do not believe that we had seen this female sculpt out of Hasbro, and they used it twice. Unfortunately, both for the same character, both for Jean Grey. This is, of course, the Dark Phoenix version. I love the gold sash, the way the yellow, red, and gold goes together. I always like when she's possessed by the Phoenix Force, how her eyes just turn completely white. Really, really good hair. She actually stands pretty well for a figure with this kind of slight build. But we'll see another version of Jean coming up probably, I guess, in the, in the next box. But this is the only, to my knowledge, the only female who showed up in the Icons line was Jean Grey here as Dark Phoenix. Let's, okay, let's grab this bad boy. Again, this I believe is a completely new sculpt for the Icons line. This is first appearance Grey Hulk. They did make a variant green one, but this was kind of the main release was the Grey Hulk. And just look at, I always love when they really give Hulk a really, really powerful furrowed brow. And I can't imagine that you could find one any more furrowed than this one. I mean, they're, they're literally sticking out. If he were life-size, those would be sticking out like three inches from, from his eyes. This thing is huge. I mean, so here is Hulk. Here is Nightcrawler. And somewhere around here is a six inch figure. Here's a Here's a six inch figure, a big six inch figure. And he's just completely dwarfed by the Incredible Hulk. Uh, this one, I have a theory that Toy Biz was going to do a uh, first appearance, another first appearance line, and that this Hulk was going to be in it, as well as another figure that we're going to see coming up. But, you know, they lost the license, and so they didn't want to lose the sculpt and the tooling that they had put into it. And so they used it in this Marvel Legends Icons line. Here's the alternate version of Daredevil, his first appearance version. And this is this was a two-up of the early Hasbro Daredevil sculpt, which I actually really love. The only thing I don't love about this first appearance is that he has the carved DD on his, in his kind of singlet, whereas the original first appearance was just a single D on the chest. But because they use the exact same body, there was no way to get away with that. They just had to kind of paint it the way that it looked. He's actually got his billy club. And uh, it's a nice kind of like a little hefty rubber billy club that goes there. And it does fit in the pocket. Uh, but a really, really cool looking first appearance Daredevil. Just look how stern. Oh, that's so good. Now, we're fortunate. We have a couple of more X-Men. Beginning with Magneto. And Magneto did come with a pretty swanky sort of helmet to go right on top of him. He's maybe a little bit thin for Magneto. Usually I think of Magneto's a little bit broader across the chest, but he does have that cool rivet looking uh, deal there. Nice soft goods cape, but again, no wire. Wire would have definitely been a plus. I do like he has kind of the Jack Kirby hair where it sort of wings out up there, which makes him look a lot like his son, Pietro, Quicksilver. So kind of, you can see a little bit of the family resemblance in this. This was a Hasbro figure, so it came out after the, the Toy Biz line. And another unique sculpt for this line, and boy, did they go all out on this bad boy. Look at how terrific this Colossus is. And this is a great kind of classic Colossus in his, you know, really, really made famous in the early issues of, you know, Uncanny X-Men, the new X-Men 
Uh, just a really good look for him. And and again, he's mammoth. You know, here he is, and somewhere over here, here's our comparison. Here's Nightcrawler. You can see that he towers over Nightcrawler, as he should, which means he's really going to tower over this little guy. So they are absolutely ready to throw down a fastball special together with this amazing Colossus figure. All right, one more box to go. Let's pull out this last box and see what we've got in here. More Marvel Legends 12-inch, starting with, yeah, baby. Here is the McFarlane Spidey at 12-inch scale. You know, he's got the classic McFarlane eyes, those big, big white eyes with the pupils. Uh, has that same frame and body, the same sculpt that we saw with the Peter Parker headed variant version. Just all Spidey all the time. Oh, so great. And, and you know, one thing they did, you can hear it click. So it will stay in these poses because it, it clicks in there. So that's nice. I mean, this figure is 16 years old. And it still holds its shape. It still holds its joints really, really well. Those ankle joints, they click too. You may not be able to hear them, but I can feel them clicking. So that's a nice move. Not something that was done on the 6-inch figure, but when you have a 12-inch figure, having those clicked-in joints really helps him to stay, stay upright. We'll compare him to the most modern version of Spider-Man that I have in the symbiote suit. Uh, here is our black Spider-Man. This is... Uh, a little, I think this is still pretty much similar to the Pizza Spidey body. Uh, Pizza Spidey, where are you? All the way down at the bottom. Uh, yeah, these two look to be exactly the same, but just such a great job with this black suit. Look at how awesome that head is. God, it's great. And here he is. Here is the regular version of Venom. Oh, the jaw is articulated. His head actually comes up so that you can get some movement out of that jaw. Look at that thing. Look at the swirl around the eyes. You can almost see the movement of the symbiote in this sculpt. It's it's you know there's so it's so much more rough hewn than the other figures that we've seen. So much more so than even Captain America and Iron Man. You know he's got the beautiful. Look how the the spider like comes down his back and actually finishes down on his on his torso piece there. Just all of that strength across his back. But again, the real winner is this head sculpt on this spectacular Venom figure. Woo! This is, oh, look who's here. This is not a Marvel Legends icon. This is from the first Iron Man. Oh my gosh, it still works. I can't believe it. What else do you say, Tony? I am Iron Man. Oh, you absolutely are. So this was a 12 inch talking Iron Man uh, from the first Iron Man movie. I, I think at some point his, I wonder if these will light up. Yeah! Holy cow, I can't believe this thing still works and the batteries are still good, but really, really sweet looking first movie Iron Man, which was still such a great look. It's such, oh, wait a minute. He's got something with his feet where I think if he stomps down, he'll make like the superhero pose. That one may not be working, but let's, let's see if there's something else. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, Jean Grey, one more time. Oh, my daughter's puppy got a hold of Jean. Sorry, but we'll put that behind your back. Uh, here you can see they went with painted eyes. And it does give the face so much more personality. Of course, as a female figure, she has much softer features than, you know, the men that we've seen in this line. And you can see how, what a big deal it is to, to change the sculpt, to really give such a different look. She's fantastic also with the the green and gold. I wish well I wish we'd gotten more characters of everybody, but I certainly would have liked to have seen a Storm uh or a Captain Marvel, you know, some more of the the great female figures in the in the Marvel universe during this time. And then we're going to finish up with our last figure, which I really think was meant to be a 6-inch figure, but it just never got produced and that's Gray Beast. So first appearance Gray Beast, and this never appeared as a six-inch figure. You know that because you've never seen this head sculpt before. You know, look at look at this. This is a very, very different head sculpt than any Toy Biz Beast that was produced. He's got all of his fur completely sculpted out. He's got his trunks. He has, you know, new feet, new arms. But this is a totally different, totally different Beast head sculpt. They did release a variant of this in blue with a lab coat. 
but it still had this kind of feral original beast face, which makes me think this was the one they were trying to make. They weren't trying to make a blue beast, you know, kind of the jovial happy beast. And then they're like, ah, oh, we'll just paint him gray and send him out. I think they were trying to make a gray beast and then, you know, just painted one blue and, and sold that as well. But really, really cool. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, super excited to share my collection with you. I know how much you guys love Spidey and Venom almost as much as I do. Uh, we've got some great Spider-Man content coming up for Spider-Man No Way Home in the next couple of weeks. And go ahead, click subscribe, hit like, hit that notification bell, and we will see you next time at Carbon Scoring.